What's up my friends, it is Danny Gallows of course, who'd you think it was? Happy June, and welcome back to another very musical vlog. So guys, for today's video, I wanted to touch on the topic of simplicity again, and how it can oftentimes be the best and simplest solution for things. Um, because, you know, too often I see other musicians out there making these very complex videos on how to craft beats. And, you know, it's not really easy for people who are just beginning at music to understand. You know, the more complex it is, well, the less simple it is to comprehend. Now, of course, we all have our own specific methods and ways of doing things as individual musicians, but for my um, method of composition, I like to utilize drum kits, and that's just because I like a fuller sound. I like the sound of a full kit behind all of my music, just to add all that meat, you know, onto the bones. Um, but it's important that even if you use drum kits, right, you have to know how to craft them and kind of manipulate them in certain ways so that you're not just copying and pasting the beats. And of course, if you're just starting out on your musical journey, copying and pasting things will be what you're doing a majority of the time just to figure things out. I know I did when I was just starting out, right? But even if you are using that kind of copy and paste method, there's still a really simple way that you can actually craft your own unique beats just by doing one simple thing, and that is adjusting the tempo. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you guys is how to craft something hardcore, like a drum and bass beat, down into like a chill hop beat or even a lo-fi beat. And as impossible as that may sound with just adjusting the tempo, you guys will see what I mean here in a minute. So what I've got here for you guys, I've got four beats lined up on my audio workstation, which are all drum and bass beats. They're really hardcore, really intense, really spastic, right? They're very, very, very intense beats, right? So I'll play this first one here for you guys. Right? Classic drum and bass beat, right? Really, really in your face and intense. But if I take the tempo, and by the way, the tempo is at 150. That's what drum and bass is usually around, like 150, 170. So if I take this tempo and I drop it down to 60 instead, right? Now listen to what happens. Now you get a nice, slow, easy down tempo beat that you can use, and you can use that for lo-fi. And what's so great about it is that because the beat is slowed down, what it does is it drags the sound out and it produces basically all these ghost rhythms, which are basically um, these kind of sounds that get dragged out by the snare or the hi-hat. So when the beat's going really, really fast, dunk da dunk dunk ga dunk da dunk dunk da you don't hear the dragging of the hi-hat, the, the sustain of the hi-hat, or the sustain of the snare drum. But when you slow it down, the hi-hat hits and the snare hits become dragged down. So you can hear this. Right? It produces a really, really cool effect. And all I did was drop the tempo. And now you can use that. You throw a little filter on there. Now you can use that for a lo-fi song, right? So what I'll do now is I'll mute that one. I'll go down to, um, I'll go down to another beat. I'll put this back on 160. And we'll try the second beat out now. This is the second drum and bass beat. Another classic drum and bass beat, right? So let's take the tempo and uh, we'll drop it down to 70, right? Right? Now you could use that as a chill hop beat, right? Throw some layering on there, now it's a chill hop beat, right? And it's the same for all of these. It's the same for all of these, uh, these, these beats, you know? We'll mute that one, we'll go down to the, the third beat. Right? We'll drop that down to 60 again.
Again, I just created another lo-fi beat with that nice drag sustain effect on the beats, right? And you can do that with anything. You know, I got one more beat here for you guys. I mean, I'm sure you guys, I'm sure you guys get the idea by now, of course. But, you know, here's another really cool kind of um, a lighter drum and bass beat, right? Usually utilizing just the kind of hi-hats and the drums, right? But again, if you drop the tempo down, we'll drop the tempo down to 70, right? Now I'll be able to use this as a lo-fi beat. You get a nice low, tinny, right, kind of nostalgic, old, simple little beat that you can use for lo-fi songs. How cool is that? And there you go. See, just by adjusting the tempo, I was able to get a brand new unique sound. You know, no complex adjustments, no sample surgery, you know, nothing complicated to understand. Just adjusting the tempo gave me something brand new that you can utilize for like three different styles of music. The whole point of music production should always be creativity and imagination, right? Not seeing things how they are, but how they could be. How can I use this in a different way? How can I apply this to a different style of music, right? There's all different kinds of ways to do things. So this is my message to you guys is experiment for yourself. You know, speed up a tempo, drop down a tempo, layer beats, dissect beats, and put them back together in specific patterns. That's what it's all about, experimentation. And a great starting point is just doing something simple like this by speeding up or dropping tempos and seeing how you can apply those to different uh, sound styles and song styles and creating something specific and unique for yourself. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for today's music theory slash vlog. Those are my thoughts anyway. But now comes the best part of the video where I turn it over to all of you. So go ahead and leave all your thoughts and opinions down below in the great white void. Do you guys have your own specific way of doing things? And if so, I want to hear about them. Leave all your thoughts down below. And as always, until next we may take care. And I see you guys back here for the next musical vlog very soon. Peace.